Mother, this is Miss Potter. Ah, oh, at last. We poor forgotten folk in Bedford Square get to share some of Norman's excitement. Mrs. Warren, it's so kind of you to invite me. Nonsense. It was the desperate act of a woman who was beginning to forget what her son looked like. Mother. And this is my sister, Amelia. Hello. Norman allowed us a peek at Peter Rabbit, Miss Potter. We found it utterly charming. So we wheedled, cajoled, and absolutely insisted that Norman bring you round for tea. I have decided that you and I are going to be friends. Have you? Well, Norman tells me that you're unmarried, as am I, and that you're not unhappy about it, and I can't tell you how much that pleases me. Why can't you talk about the weather like other girls? Well, all the other unmarried daughters in our circle, and believe me, there are many, they sit around all day gossiping and unaccountably bursting into tears. But you have done something. You've written a book. I warn you, I am prepared to like you very much. Well, in that case, I shall have to like you too, Miss Warren. Call me Millie, and that's to be the last of Miss Potter too, I'm afraid. Absolutely. Beatrix, by all means. Thank goodness the tea. I'm beginning to feel quite ill with all this bonhomie. Oh, do let's have tea in the garden, Mother. It's too beautiful a day in every way not to share it with the flowers. Well, I love to garden. Mother disapproves, but I can't help myself. I love flowers shockingly. That's why you have the hands of a greengrocer. I do not. Thank heavens, Norman sometimes deigns to read to me. If I had to rely on you for companionship, I should expire of loneliness. My mother's taste in books, Miss Potter, and I'm afraid in life runs to the, um, melodramatic. Oh, nonsense. I like good English biographies, and you know it. I loathe silly romances, such as the ones your brothers publish. My brothers and I, Mother. I am part of the firm now, too, you know. Oh, a sweet-natured boy like you does not need to work. Your brothers provide quite well for all of us, and I need your smile here. That then no one listens to a crotchety old lady in a wheelchair. Indeed they don't, Mother. <laughs> My mother may be crotchety, Miss Potter, but she does have an eye for beautiful things. She was fascinated by your drawings. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Utterly unique. Oh. <laughs> yes, well, when I see something unusual, I... I'm not content just to look at it. I must capture it. <laughs> Last summer, in the farmyard, I was drawing something that was quite lovely in the sun. And suddenly I realized I was drawing the pig's swill bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Had to laugh at myself. <laughs> I feel a bit of a chill, Norman. Can you take me inside? Of course. Please excuse me. It was delightful meeting you, Miss Potter. And you. Do stay longer and teach Millie how to behave. Funny. I think that means she likes you. Did she say she likes to draw swill buckets? Indeed she did, Mother. Indeed she did. Now, I think by Wednesday you could hang the lace curtains upstairs. Then at least it'll look like summer, even if it doesn't feel like it. Yes, madam. Oh, Beatrix, what is this stain on your blouse? Jane says it won't wash out and she's tried everything. Oh, it's ink. Ink. I must have brushed against something at the printer's. Jane, I'm very sorry for causing you extra work. Jane, take the bells away. Give it to the poor. This behavior shows scant regard for your father's money. Well, one day I shall make enough money to buy my own clothes. I'm far too old to be living off the generosity of my father. You're too old to be spending so much time in the company of a man who takes you to printers. Your father does not approve, and neither do I. Mr. Warren is publishing my book. <laughs> that book? I can hardly wait till it's finished and forgotten. Now, I don't understand you, Beatrix. Your father and I have introduced you to so many suitable young men of your class. Young men of fortune and impeccably good family. Oh, certainly. Like that charming fellow, Lionel Stokely. Lionel is a particular favourite of his uncle, the Earl, whom we visit every summer at Stokely Court. Oh, and I do yes. regret terribly that I didn't accept Harry Haddon Bell. Harry's great-grandfather went to Sandhurst. Harry's grandfather went to Sandhurst. Harry's father went to Sandhurst. And so I went to Sandhurst. <laughs> Your father and I in the game he would often go out right in the morning and shoot breakfast. Ashland's a crack shot. No! But no, you're just a pig-headed girl. Mr. Warren is asking for you at the door, miss. Mr. Warren? He's not expected. Unannounced perfection.
two sold while we were at the booksellers. That amounts to 40 in a week. Forty. Which is 160 Good in a month. Gracious. And I'm trying to remember my 12 times table. Not 1920 in a year. I can't breathe. That's just in one shop. My dear Miss Potter, you are an author. We have achieved what we set out to do. We have created a book. Yes. What's the matter? A cloud just passed across your face. You've been very generous with your time, Mr. Wong. Shown me things that I never would have seen. Printing houses. <laughs> I shall miss your company. Are you losing my company? Well, it just occurred to me that the book is out and our association is coming to an end. Miss Potter, I, I had hoped that you might have other stories. Really? Really? Do you know, uh, I recently remembered one, I thought I'd forgotten it, um, about a duck. <laughs> a very stupid duck. Based on one of your friends? <laughs> it's based on myself, I think. It's a story I told a friend once. Yes? My family summers in the Lake District, and there was someone there, the groundsman's son, who was always interested in my stories. Oh, Miss Beatrix, are you skulking? No such thing, really, Healers. No, I was drying off my sketchbook. Not bad, Miss Beatrix. Do you have any animal stories for me today? I don't. Sorry. Nothing new. Oh, that's Jemima. She doesn't have a story yet. Not a proper one. Jemima a duck? Jemima a puddle duck. And a stupider duck the world has never seen. <laughs> she goes looking for a safe place to lay her eggs, then meets a charming gentleman with a long bushy tail and very sharp teeth. Aha! Uh -huh. Precisely. The gentleman offers her his shed, and Jemima is surprised to find that there are so many feathers in it. But then, as I told you, she is a very stupid duck. I like it. I'd love to paint every view in this valley, but I'm not very good at landscapes. Wait too long and it won't be here to paint, Miss Beatrix. Really? That's ridiculous. No, I'm serious. The large farms are being broken up into small plots and sold off. Well, you can't stand in the way of progress. So they say. But I say, beauty's worth preserving. I know you do, really. But nobody could disagree with you about that. <laughs> Well, I'll see you soon, then. Perhaps not, Miss Beatrix. I'm leaving for Manchester next week. To study the law? Yes, indeed. I have to better myself somehow. Good luck. Send me some drawings. I will. <laughs> he encouraged me to take my writing seriously. We must get started on the new story straight away. Mm. Jemima Puddle Duck. I think the public should like that. And Tom Thumb and Hunker Munker. What, what, what do you think? Oh. If you, if you think... Your book has been very important in my life. You have been very important in my life. And you and mine, Mr. Warren. And we must do it again and again. And again. I promise you, I intend to be a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs>